The primary um, role of the Humanities Council in New Mexico is following the belief that thought, wisdom, and understanding must be shared. And so we look at different formats, ways, and programs that we can get out to general audiences in New Mexico. I think the New Mexico Humanities Council has um, always been at the forefront of creating these kinds of discussions and dialogues and bringing um, these kinds of opportunities to New Mexico and not just Albuquerque in particular, but the entire state. Organizations like the National Park System, the National Endowment for the Humanities, or the 100th anniversary of the Pulitzer, it's important to ask ourselves how has this activity sustained itself for 50 or 100 years? Why do communities feel that this type of work uh, from these nonprofits and organizations, why is it important? Not everybody knows about the Pulitzer or the importance of the works of literature and history and journalism that have been produced over time. In the United States, we have a tendency to forget our own traditions and history, and American literature gives us great access to the past of the United States and all the good and bad things that have Americans have gone through over the past 200 years. I think a 100 year is just amazing to recognize something that's been around that long. I would say this prize is part of our culture now, in the sense that it's been around that long. And I think it's really important to celebrate anniversaries, to understand the commitment of people who are involved in giving out these prizes and judging them. The Pulitzer Prize has become America's most prestigious literary award. It is the literary award that tends to define the literary scene every year. So there's often intense lobbying by publishers to get their Pulitzer Prize book won. <laughs> For a lot of people, the Pulitzer defines part of the American literary camp. Winning a book by the Pulitzer means it'll still be in print 50, 60 years from now. Um, Joseph Pulitzer, who established the prizes, um, saw communication via literature as a way to expand our education. Literature allows us to expand our knowledge base, our understanding, and link with one another, extend our humanity for, if, um, um, for sure, uh, expand our worlds, and strengthen our humanity and our link. The Pulitzer, in my opinion, is the foremost prize for literature and journalism, um, specifically American journalism and literature. And the Pulitzer winners and honors are generally um, what I consider to be representative of the American experience. I think it's important for people to celebrate anniversaries because a lot of times it may be something that maybe they're not familiar with. Uh, with the Pulitzer, you know, there's the, the journalism, photography, and especially literature, which is very important to libraries. Pulitzer, it seems like it's a thing that you, you always hear about. It's out there that, oh yeah, this is the Pulitzer Prize winner for this year. And so I think that one of the impacts is getting people to actually pick up, oh, this, this won the Pulitzer Prize. That it's getting people to read books they normally wouldn't. It's getting people to realize um, what Pulitzer books actually consist of. As I'm going through the books, I'm really realizing what it takes to become a Pulitzer winner, and I feel that they're doing the same thing. Hopefully that will translate into people in the years to come saying, oh yeah, hey, that was a Pulitzer. I remember reading, you know, I remember reading back when we did that in Brannigan. I remember reading some of those Pulitzers and they were real good. Maybe I should pick up this one and read it too. We started out with some criteria that we wanted to meet. We wanted to look at literature that was universal throughout time, as most of the Pulitzer literature is. We wanted to look at a range of experience in various cultures and ethnic groups and races so that we could look at America as a whole. Well, we've got five different books, and it's a great range of novels that both cover different topics in American history, from slavery to issues going on on Native American reservations to what's happening in the American suburbs. So a great diversity of topic, but also a great diversity of authors. The Stories of John Cheever by John Cheever. Every story had its own, its own focus, and you could identify with the characters in each story. Lovely, Dark, Deep by Joyce Carol Oates. My favorite story is The Things You Pass on the Way to Oblivion. Plague of Doves by Louise Erdich. I think she does a really brilliant job of kind of decolonizing uh, traditional themes in literature. 
Uh, she does bring up death. She does bring up family. She does bring up different relationships. But the way in which she does it is, is very authentic and very indigenized. The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde by Juno Diaz. Diaz is one of my favorite authors. I've read it before. I'm excited to go back and read it again. Beloved by Toni Morrison. Toni Morrison not only described the impact of slavery, which you had heard, but she made you feel the experience for the people and the generations. They're good books. They're, they're, they're good pieces of literature. I, I think uh, most of the time, as far as I know, poetry goes to good writing. Because it's fiction, it's enjoyable and informative at the same time. The award tries to go to a novel that's about American themes. And it's a distinctly American award, so they are looking more than just excellence. Which novel embodies the American experience best in that year? I think it's important to read Pulitzer works of literature because they're books that won the award for really investigating, in some way, American life and American history. And as Americans, uh, it's important to know our history, and literature gives us a very personal way of connecting with the history. This type of program brings wider awareness of great literature to New Mexicans. All of the participants have told me that the Pulitzer books are so good, so complex and challenging, that they inspire deep thinking and multiple readings. So the participants very much appreciate that the program provides them with a personal copy of the books, which has allowed them to immerse themselves in the work, read it, come back to it, ponder, make connections, have a realization, and then go back and reread portions of the book. When I was reading this book, knowing that I was coming into a discussion about it, it made me read it in a deeper fashion. I paid more attention. I tried to make more connections, knowing that I was going to be discussing it with, with other people. The discussion groups, in my view, foster um, an environment for face-to-face -face connection. So people are able to work with, with one another, people are able to exchange ideas, to laugh and talk about something, perhaps even cry about issues, um, but understand at a deeper level, person to person. It's important for public libraries to host reading discussions because a book discussion program provides a forum where readers can come together and talk about books and the reading experience, which is a really great way to build a community of readers for a library. People will um, learn new perspectives. You know, you read these books that can be controversial or uh, divisive, and you form your opinions. You come to a book discussion group, and you hear all these other opinions, and people can really um, open their mind. I think the New Mexico Humanities Council should definitely have more programs like the one that we're currently running. It, it provides a service to the community not only in getting that socialization but also getting somewhat of an education out to people. As an educator, especially in like low-income communities, communities of color and rural communities, um, I think a lot of times the conversation on literacy has to do with access, like, oh, kids don't have books, kids don't have books. And that's definitely a crucial part in terms of access to literacy. Um, but I think one of the core components of the conversation that we're missing is not just the access to the books, but the opportunity to really discuss and delve and, and interact and grapple with literature as well. And so I think, you know, spaces like this, programs like this, um, are great in terms of engaging and including more folks in the community, um, applying a little bit more of that pressure and motivation to read, finish a book, um, because you have a set date and a set time where you know, you're expected to discuss and talk about it. Um, but I think it does a nice job of spreading that culture of literacy. I think reading and discussion programs that are organized um, through libraries and through humanities councils do a lot to help promote the love of literature and lifelong learning, and I really think funding should continue for them. We're about the world of ideas, and we're better to carry forth dialogue and uh, learning as we know it than in literature and in history.